Hey, hello there. In this tutorial, I want to go over a new method to do mosaic tiles. As you can see here, this is the previous mosaic tool. And the method that I'm using is uh, creating a very high resolution grid and then taking away the scenes. So here you can see that this is a goldfish. So I am projecting a, an image here of a goldfish this is doing the mapping so i'm taking the position and then multiplying and adding uh, some values to shift it to the middle and then here i'm creating a grid and if we go up one level the grid is five by five meters and with a res resolution of 500 faces and it looks a little bit like this so it's really black because there's so much geometry if we zoom in, we see all these small squares. So if I go into the nodes, uh, go back to preview mode, here you can see that I'm taking this grid and I am deleting a uh, Fornoi and that takes away all the seams. So if I go in here and I do view, viewer node, then we can see what happens. So the grid, is full without a delete geometry node and then I use the Voronoi and then a less than 0.04 to take away all these seams and then you have basically the uh, base for the uh, mosaic tiles what I do later then I capture the position I scale the elements to scale them down to one point and then um, giving them all the same color of the color below of the goldfish and then set the position to the previous position so they go back to the same scale and this makes it that not every tiny face has a different color but the whole small tile has the same color i go over this in a previous tutorial where i explained this whole process um, the point here is that it's very computationally intensive so if I make any change, you already saw when I put the viewer node in between, it takes a while to compute. And I mostly like to have the geo nodes to be fast. So now I'm going to go into the new method. If I go here, you can see I have an image of uh, a physicist, Michio Kaku, and he is made up of all these tiny tiles. So it's also uh, made as a mosaic. And now here I have the image in the parameters. I have a size in width, a size in height, and you can already see that it works really fast. Also, I can scale up the gaps or make them disappear. So they're all connected. So uh, this new method is using not a lot of geometry to take away and it's making its own faces actually. So if I go into grid, you see that every tile uh, has a, its own n-gon or a polygon. And this makes it super fast. So it doesn't have to calculate all the tiny faces and take them away. And how this is done is if we go into this uh, node group, you can see here, um, here I'm distributing points. So I'm taking a grid again. Uh, let's go and make another viewer node so we can see what happens. Here I have a grid and it's moderately uh, high resolution medium resolution you can say i'm using here two by two meters and i'm creating this grid to mostly capture the color also so i'm taking here the grid i'm putting it to a sub subdivide mesh so it gives a bit more geometry and then i'm taking the color of the image of uh, the guy you just saw and then i'm using here a sample nearest surface and store the color from the mesh below to the tiles and the tiles are being made here so here i'm using mesh to points so i also have uh, distribute points on face and uh, points 
uh, random position so I can say how much points I want. So there are three method methods. Um, it starts using the mesh to points, but you can also connect the other ones if you get this tool. You can get it on Blender Market if you want. You can also just build it yourself because I'm going through the whole thing here. So first make the grid, then set the mesh to points. So every face has a point. Then I'm setting the position by a noise texture so it uh, really becomes scrambled and then I am taking a curve line resample it by one so it becomes a point as well here we have the curve line um, oh it's set to zero then resample it to one then instance it on the points so now you can't really see it because it's all set to zero then I'm realizing these instances and then I'm joining it with a quad like this and I'm subdividing it by 500 and then I'm uh, joining them together filling the curve so this is the boundary and then it creates like all the geometry for the different faces then next I'm sampling the nearest point uh, drive the id by a random value from 0 to 1 you can see it different uh, and then store the named attribute into the edge rand is uh, dutch for edge so that's for the edges so this part i actually took from a tutorial on uh, youtube and it's from Bradley Animation and he breaks down on how to create a procedural Voronoi and he animates it also. I didn't really need the animation so I adjusted it a little bit uh, but if you want to know how to build that one you can go to his channel he has excellent tutorials it's really great uh, but if you just want to build this you can go in here and copy this um, I copied this part also from his tutorial. So it's just some uh, vector math uh, calculating positions and it's resetting the positions of the hexagons. So if I take these two and I mute it, you see that now it looks more like hexagons. And uh, if I take the right positions, it makes them more like uh, the Voronoi pattern and some are more square some are more rounded and this looks a lot better so if we continue here um, here everything is one mesh then I split the edges so it's not all one mesh and then I'm storing the color here so the color comes from the image so again I use the grid and then I'm subdividing the grid over here so it becomes more dense so i have more colors to work with and then here i'm storing them with a sample nearest surface with set to color and then go to store named attribute and i'm calling this one color so i'm later using this one in the material that i'm setting over here so next I'm capturing the position of the face. Um, then I'm setting the position to zero. So I'm taking the position and I'm uh, rotating. Let's see what happens here. Um, you can see the mesh here. So I'm setting the position. I'm taking a, uh, a in the vector. I take a vector rotate and put the position in the vector. I put the center uh, from the mesh islands, uh, then taking the X and Y position and then I'm turning them a little bit. And then I, uh, uh, or the position is the center that I'm capturing here. I need to capture or else the position will be gone. And here I'm setting the rotation from the uh, middle of the mesh island 
and how that looks is if we go in here and then when I give the here I'm setting it to a rotation value so I can add rotation you see that they rotate more so I give them slight randomness so it doesn't look like a really flat surface like mosaic tiles are usually laid in by hand and there can be slight variations then what I'm doing next here is I am scaling them a little bit by a certain amount and that's the gaps so I am putting a gap of 0 0.005 meters very slight and then I subtract it from one because I don't want to put uh, big here you set the scaling so it one is full scale and 0.9 is 90 percent of that so what I'm doing here is I'm taking one and I'm subtracting just this tiny value so you can set the gap instead of the scaling in percentages then I am extruding them and then I'm giving them the material the color so the color is stored here in the store named attribute and then if I delete this viewer node I'm also taking the grid which I don't need it it's just the layer behind it it's nice to have just this white uh, this white fill in the background just like you're putting plaster between the tiles and then if we go to shading let's see our picture here you see that there's they're a bit glossy and they all rotated slightly different and here I'm just using the attribute color to plug into the base color and then they get the color of the image and then when I go to geometry nodes here let's go over it again if you want to copy it just quickly these are all the nodes this is uh, making the tiles here I'm reshaping the tiles and this is what's going on inside this node and then for the final uh, section I'm setting another rotation and a color and I'm capturing the color here so if we go up one level it's all compressed here into one node group you can get it on blender market together with all the other mosaic generators I have a few different methods that you can use they all look a little bit different as well but this is the fastest way to do it and also the fastest to work with so I can still scale it uh, I give it uh, two and I can change the gaps I can also change the scale of the Fornoi it just changes the pattern um, when I scale it down you see that they become more regular there's more of a pattern in the lines uh, you have the detail so actually these values drive the Voronoi texture if we go in here you see I have this no or noise texture this noise texture I use the scale the detail the roughness the lacunarity and the distortion so if I take down the roughness you see a pattern emerge if I take down this one uh, detail and the scale I think I can get to a grid even let the scale this down here you see it almost goes back to a grid so you even have that option if you want more square styles what you can also do is um, take these values and plug in your image into the values so maybe you want the dark spots to be irregular and the light spots to be more regular and then you get uh, also an interesting mosaic uh, style and you can determine that all by yourself so you can get it now on blender market or you can build it yourself uh, i hope this is useful and i hope to see you in the next one okay bye